Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Thailand. Listen, today I wanted to have a short conversation with you as a follow-up from my last video where I recommended five gardener channels from YouTube. Um, a couple of you had asked specifically about natural farming, uh, specifically that of grain natural farming and Shadam. How do you determine which one of those is really the best discipline to start off with? Let your soil's pH tell you that. Let it be the judge. Let's take a look at it. So this isn't meant to really be a science class or anything like that. This is just a really basic overview of the pH scale. pH stands for power of hydrogen. When they're measuring pH, for instance, with a soil meter, it's looking at the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions in your soil. Now, if your reading is below a seven, it's considered acidic. If it's above a seven, it's considered alkaline, also referred to as basic or sweet soil. Now, you guys probably already know that blueberries enjoy acidic soil. Things that enjoy alkaline soils are things like arugula, asparagus, pole beans. And just depending on the region of the world that you live in, if you live in a wet, uh, humid climate like I do here in Thailand, uh, the, the soils do tend to be a little bit more acidic. But if you live in a more dry, arid part of the world, they do tend to be more alkaline. Now, this may seem a little controversial, but there is a notion in the Western countries that an ideal pH range of 4.9 to 8.1 is the most tolerable range for most plants in most soils in the Western world. So we're talking about the United States, most of Europe, South America, and those areas. These are considered the most ideal ranges for everything that's acidic to alkaline and in between. But when we start talking about pH, which really is not an often talked about topic in the natural farming discussions amongst KNF and Shadam. But when we start talking about pH, what we really want to try to focus on is neutral, seven. That's where if we have the opportunity to start from, we would like to. And the reason is because it gives us our perfect balancing point between hydrogen and hydroxide in our soil. Okay, because a lot of this is gonna come into play later on when we start looking at the way these inputs are created, specifically because of the ingredients that are used, particularly with Korean natural farming's ingredients. Now, as some of you may have uh, seen from my previous videos, one of the things I've really been concerned about with my soil, in particular at my property, uh, has been heavy metal contamination. And the reason is because of the garbage that I pulled out of the property when I first moved here. It led me to believe that there's a possibility that my soil could be contaminated with heavy metals. But to my surprise, when I did both a check on the red soil towards the back of my house and my darker clay soil at the front of my house, both were very, very close to neutral. My red clay being closer to about a 6.8 to a 6.9, with my darker clay being almost at a neutral seven. And this was really great news because this is exactly where you wanna be able to start off. This is precisely what you're looking for when you're wanting to begin to build things up. So now why is all of this important? Be aware of the ingredients that are used, alcohol, rice, sea salt, sugar, and vinegar. The thing that you're going to find when you use these ingredients is that the inputs that you're creating, they're going to become very acidic. And when I say acidic, I mean really, really acidic. Um, well below neutral, in some cases as low as a two, and in other cases upwards in the area of around a six to maybe about a six and a half, depending on what it is that you're working with. A lot of that is dictated by the ingredients themselves of the things that you're trying to ferment. But I have to tell you, Korean Natural Farming is where I started and it is so much fun. I mean, whether it's your first set of IMO collections or your first set of charred bones and charred eggshells that you're using to make your first calcium inputs to your first set of fermented fruit juice or fermented plant juices that you're putting together. This is all exciting stuff because we're balancing things with nature. We're using things that are on our property or that we can get very easily in our local area to create our natural fertilizers, our natural pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides with. It's fun stuff. And the other thing is obviously it's organic. We're not using chemicals to go ahead and create these with. Everything is being done with the microbes. So just keep this in mind. These are very acidic inputs. I'm talking as low as a two to a six on the pH scale. As you start to process your inputs from Korean natural farming, just bear in mind that when you collect that IMO, you're gonna be stabilizing it with brown sugar. When you start to make those calcium inputs, whether it's WCA or WCAP, you're gonna be using brown rice vinegar or some other type of vinegar that has the mother with it. And also when it comes to fermented plant juice, that's also going to be stabilized with sugar. 
And as many of you have seen in my previous videos, one of my favorite inputs from Korean Natural Farming is LAB, in its name already indicating that it's acidic, lactic acid bacteria. Now, one of the other things, and I'm not going to really be able to demonstrate it because I have not done it in quite some time, that Korean Natural Farming um, focuses in on is aerobic teas. You're creating aerobic bacteria. You're bringing in all the oxygen-rich microbes that really feed off of oxygen. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's great. But one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that oxygen-rich microbes are only good in the first two and a half centimeters of your soil. That's it, because below two and a half centimeters, oxygen is not getting into your soil. That's not even a full inch depth from the top soil down. But it is incredibly powerful still because what it's doing is it's creating everything at the topsoil level to help build your topsoil, to help feed the plants that have feeder roots at the top of the soil. So these are still very, very important microbes to develop and to put in place for our soils. When we start looking at Jadam, one of the things you're going to notice is that the ingredients that you're going to be using for things such as JMS and JLF, it's a lot less. The one common thing that KNF and Jadam have is the need for sea salt. But in Jadam, we're focused mostly on a starch like a potato and then just really good fungal soil for the microbial life that we want to be able to develop our inputs with. Now, the other thing to keep in mind when we're looking at Jadam is that the inputs really are less acidic, ranging from about a six to a seven. And additionally, the anaerobic teas that are made from Jadam are deep soil microbes. This is really, really important stuff. I know a lot of people get freaked out at the idea of pathogenic um, teas because you're making an anaerobic brew, but both fermentation and putrefaction are important elements to good soil health. I mean, if you take a look, for instance, at these weeds I was pulling out of a pot trial set that I'm working on right now for a, hopefully a video later on this month, Take a look at this root. Look how long that thing is. Look how small that plant is and look how long that root is. There's a lot that's going on below the first inch of your soil, a lot. And that's where teas like these uh, teas from Jadam, such as JMS and JLF are really key for the soil's health. It gets the microbes deep down in the soil that don't necessarily have to rely upon oxygen to live. So how do I answer the question of KNF or Jadam? It's really not even the right question, but to give it a direct answer, my response is use them both. So as I was saying, there's really no one is better than the other. It really just depends. They're both excellent practices. They're both excellent disciplines. You can use them both. If you have acidic soil, does it mean that from time to time you can't use things like LAB or OHN? Absolutely not. And likewise, if you have extremely alkaline soil, does that mean you can't use things like JMS or JLF from time to time? Absolutely not. It's all about balance. Natural farming is about the soil. It's not just about your plants. It's about taking care of the microbes in the soil, which take care of your plants and your trees. That's the way to think of it. So what is the key to being able to utilize these inputs properly? Well, if you've been with me to this point in the video, you're gonna find out right now. It's microdosing. Both KNF and Jadam will focus specifically on a schedule of when you should put your inputs in place for your soil based off the plant's needs. Whether your plant is in its infancy, its puberty stage, its flowering stage, its fruiting stage, or its end of life stage, there are schedules that you can put in place to utilize your inputs properly so that your soil and your plant's health is getting the most possible benefit from these inputs as you put everything in place and start to feed your soil with these inputs. In both KNF and Jadam, microdose between 1 to 500 to 1 to 1,000 for most all of their inputs. Almost all of them are between 1 to 500 to 1 to 1,000. And you never really use it full strength. And usually, like I said before, it's just it's based on a schedule based on your plant's needs. The only time you'll really see anybody using full strength inputs is in uh, soil that doesn't have anything in the ground yet. Meaning nothing's been planted, no trees, no plants, nothing, just bare soil. Uh, JMS is excellent for that. Anyway, gang, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please just pop something down in the comments section below. And again, I'm also going to leave the official links to both KNF and Jadam in the description box below for you to be able to take a look at yourselves. Until next time, take care. Bye for now.